Dr. Richard Allen Miller is with us this first 60 minutes tonight. Rick is uh, a brilliant man, uh, extremely well informed. In fact, he's all over the map with his wisdom and facts and factoids, and he's got uh, a view on most everything. Richard lives in southern Oregon, but he is a citizen of the world, certainly this country, which is sinking. Uh, the retail in this country is dying. Wall Street is finally coming back down out of the uh, clouds, cloud cuckoo land to be exact. It's down to 15,000 and something, down I think 250 points or thereabout today. And due to go down further, 2016 in all likelihood will be the crash people have been predicting for the last uh, several years. It's looking everywhere around the globe as if this year is going to be one of great reckoning, chickens coming home, and much worse. We have the increased immigration, oh, excuse me, invasion of Europe, which is now scheduled for a second wave. Uh, Mrs. Merkel turning out to be the Polish Jew communist that people talk about her as being, who hates Germany. No question about it, according to many of the MPs there, one of them said Mrs. Merkel needs to close the borders to illegal immigrants. Well, one plus one equals two in German as well, doesn't it? Same situation here. We have 45 to 50 million, all told, illegals in this country. No one knows exactly how many Muslims Obama has illegally brought into this country and other He's not saving Christians. That's another thing you got to keep in mind. There are about 2 million Christians in Syria. About 100,000 of them have been butchered to date, but none of them have been singled out for any special or equal treatment by the administration, which is run by, in all likelihood, a card-carrying Muslim. Well, at least he's carrying a card of the oldest Chicago gay bathhouse for men. We know that. He may not uh, be carrying a card for his Muslim citizenship, but he's uh, he's got an agenda, no question about it. Unless we stop this now, it is over. We would seem to have one chance left. His name is Trump. We'll watch the campaign season that continues as it continues to unwind to see more solid pronouncements from him about his policies. What he has said already, if he were to do as president, would make him an historic figure, truly of immense magnitude, uh, we will see. Uh, Rick, welcome back to the program. How are you? I'm good, Jeff. Thank you for, for an earlier call. It's nice to talk with you. Sure. Uh, crazy, huh, out yeah. there? <laughs> Where would you like to go in the end of days? Yeah. I mean, the yeah. massive Planet X is now in national news, and there it is, just like in the Bible. And uh, I don't have a clue yet. I sent you a couple of breaking links. There is a guy named Andy Lloyd that did a nice review of the Caltech uh, disclosure today. Uh -huh. uh, his, his, you know, you can read from that. That's an interesting post. And then I pulled up his site to find out more who Andy Lloyd was because he was being semi-reasonable in the way he was approaching uh -huh. the disclosure. Um, you know, NASA came out uh, three months ago and said that there were a series of planets, plural, right. outside the Oort cloud that were swinging around the sun as a second subset of planets. Yeah, and they've been hinting. They've been dropping hints well, for, there for it quite is. a while. Take the public ready for the yeah. big one. Yeah. The, how did the how did they put it in Armageddon when the, the engineer gets out his chair and he says, I'm going to sit up front and have a front row seat and uh -huh. drink the horror. Uh -huh. You know? <laughs> it's true. It's true. Uh, well, it's, <laughs> what it is true is Blue Kachina, which the Hopi thing about, and if you go back to Colburn Bibles, the ones that Luke and, and others used uh, when they were disciples of Christ, uh -huh. uh, they all talk about never and uh and so there it is and i like i like the term that they've hung on it planet nine yeah isn't I that like, interesting i like that it's it's 10 it, and 11 and what's that asteroid belt and some of those planetoids are solid diamonds out there you know that's why they're out there lucy oh, in the oh, sky oh. with diamonds eh 
Yeah, solid diamonds, big ones. Uh, and guess what? There are things harder than diamonds. That was something that I discovered in the early 70s, thinking it was an alien artifact at the University of Chicago. I was looking at this object, uh, artifact of some kind, and it literally was 100 times the strength of diamond, and we had no technology back then. I was a solid-state physicist. I basically fired a, a 50 caliber cannon at it and then went down with an electron microscope looking for lattice damage. And um, what I discovered was I couldn't understand what I was looking at. And today, 45 years later, here I am, uh, I now can tell you what I saw. But we didn't have that back then. It's called the fullerene, buckyball. And, and, uh, and, and they form nanotubes, and their strength is so strong. I've written technology, technical papers, mm -hmm. that nobody seemed to be terribly interested in as a neutron fullerene fusion bomb that was used in 9-11 and now is being deployed everywhere in Gaza, Yemen, and places of that nature. You could put a nanofiber tube, tubule in a length of steel in an aircraft to make it strong like they do these bicycles and then detonate it where there is no forensics. Nothing. It vaporizes. That's oh, what really? Wow. Seven. Gone. Hmm. When Building 7 came down, there was a 617-foot piece of steel rod straight up that started to fall in the... Oh, rain. I watched that many times. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but <clears throat> guess what? as it was falling, it was vaporizing. Now, that is not uh, uh, thermite. Not normal and physics. Steel no. Man with thermite. The thermite wouldn't do that. No, th there's only one thing. It turned to dust. It, it, it vaporizes. It. There's only one thing that will do that. It's a plasma. And what they're doing is they're taking a C60 molecule of uh, 60 carbon atoms, and they'll form ball. There's another one at 120, so they call that C120. These are buckyballs, and the lattice space between them is 1.4 nanometers, which is just enough to squeeze either deuterium inside it for a controlled mm -hmm. thermonuclear fusion. Mm -hmm. That's the structure. is strong enough. It will withstand and control. That was, I have a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger looking at the target at the Livermore's National Ignition Facility. Go ahead and ah. pull up Arnold Schwarzenegger and the National Ignition Facility in Livermore and see the pictures of Schwarzenegger looking at the tar target. That, what they're doing now in Ukraine is rather than putting deuterium inside it, it'll just fit. They're putting in exclusion zone water, H3O2, and that forms something that is way beyond shogunite and uh, activated charcoal that will bioremediate uh, ionizing radiation from the body. What they have done in the Ukraine and now duplicating in Russia is that they will give lethal doses of radiation to rats and feed them fullerene water. That's what it's called, fullerene hmm. water. Huh. And there is a 95% recovery. Wow. And that's wow. because, that's because hmm. what happened, and that was published, by the way, in Nexus Magazine, uh, probably about four issues that back. Good and old uh, Duncan, Duncan hit it again, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay, but now here's the deal. Um, fullerene water is easy to make because the, the exclusion zone water, H3O2, that's basically what Jerry Pollack uh, has been writing about, the fourth phase of water uh, out of the University of Washington. And by the way, Jerry was the one that hired me in 1970 when I was working military and I worked oh. out of anesthesiology he was my lead he was not my boss I had higher security clearances so I worked around the corner uh -huh. boys from Brazil that We're included Delgado and Moore and some other names I could name drop on where we were doing military studies on different things but interestingly Jerry's water that H3O2 that's hydrogen peroxide where you bring a third hydrogen molecule in, and that water 
is what causes the leading edge on a wave and why you can surf. Now, that is what touches, that's where your memory zone is, what they call the exclusion zone, not forbidden zone like we find in solid state physics. Uh, when you take gallium and arsenic and you put them together, there is, between the two of them, a thing called forbidden zone. This is your checksum error re registry where you do your, your storage of information. And water's exclusion zone is one million times more efficient because it's one million times more data. Now, that would suggest that the water in your body contains who you were and who you are and who you will be in past, present, and future life. Pretty eclectic stuff, Rick. Plus, it includes timelines. And let me oh my. explain the concepts of the nature of time and water. Hold on. Can we can we hold that? You're going to yeah. do something very, very big and very dynamic here. But a lot of people have not heard yet about the new planet that has been admitted <laughs> to hang to hang out outside the normal outer orbit of Pluto. It's it's way out there. Let me read just a little bit here. And by the way, I didn't get your email, so if you want to resend those, uh, uh, I did post the the references on this with with your. Uh, with your producer, but uh, yes, I'll do that yeah. right now. Okay. Uh, you all remember, I think, maybe some of you will remember, I should say, Plan 9 from Outer Space, the 1959 movie directed by Ed Wood, played so brilliantly by Johnny Depp in the movie, Ed Wood. Uh, Plan 9 from Outer Space. They're calling this new planet, which is way out there. I'm not sure how far out there. Planet Nine this is kind of an interesting little tribute to that uh, movie that was so bad it was good in 1959. <laughs> you, you, the CNN story talks about Pluto may have a replacement. Well, this is no Pluto. This planet is supposed to be ten times the mass of Earth. That's that's big, real big, and it orbits about twenty times farther from the sun than does Neptune. That means it would take this new planet between 10 and 20,000 years to make just one full orbit around the sun. I don't know if the orbit is uh, circular or elliptical. I haven't it's seen that yet. It's yeah, what? Very, yeah. it's I've a, got pictures. I'll it's, oh, okay. It's very elliptical. Oh, they've got it down now. And guess what? There's several out there, not just one. And one of them has an interesting... IR signature, and this is new data I'm going to let, now lay on you from some friends of mine at JPL. This, um, I have some <laughs> old friends of mine that we dialogue with each other. Now, let me tell you, the IR signature of this of this 7X indicates uh -huh. that it's at uh -huh. least five and a half times the size of Earth in density and weight. That means it's got to be made out of solid nickel or it is a collapsed dwarf binary. It, it may it may have its own heat source too. Well, we don't know. The, the heat source thing now is going to suggest that there is an artifact around it right. called a Dyson sphere, huh. and that may be where your Nibiru is using that collapsed binary as a power source to be able to go outside into the universe and access other kinds of wormholes. Huh. I, I don't know this. I'm just speculating. But the IR, the infrared countermeasures is what I did at Boeing, and I'm, uh, you know, and this IR signature is suggesting it is not a collapsed binary. That if it is, it's got an artifact around it. Hmm. Somebody's using Isn't it. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, that is. That's pretty advanced uh, technology. The Hopi, the Hopi thing about it. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. You look at cave drawings from uh, three and 4,000 years ago, like the Clovis culture, mm -hmm. they came out of the cave and rode about and became the Hopi Indian. Um, you look at this bison and you think, oh, well, they were cavemen hunting bison. No. Actually, if you take a closer look, it turns out to be a star constellation and all those dots around its eye correspond exactly 
to star constellation of that of that uh, of that uh, uh, object huh. further. Uh-huh. If you go back thirty thousand years into caves, you find the same drawings, except they're in reverse, and that suggests they were witnessing it from space. We have been here before. We are about to have the end of days, the end of the sixth epoch. It is around the corner, and you can watch the one percenters and the money, <laughs> money and what they're doing uh-huh. to prepare for this. And my they're, guess they're, is... They're going under, is what they're doing. Well, that's one de- direction. Oh, you, know, you can leave orbit. That's leery. Space migration, intelligence increase, longevity extension. Smile. And let me say this. Mars is already habited because I'm already doing projects for the Mars project. I have in Kailua, you know, ASHA deliverances, you know, right there in Ashland, uh, PacificDomes.com. We uh-huh. have a 30-foot dome in Kailua that we printed and, with a 3D printer and lined it with cadmium, and now I have a vertical aquaculture system for underground farming on Mars. And that's the Mars project in Kailua. Now, there mm-hmm. are mm-hmm. a series... Yeah, it gets better and better, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> NASA... You're wild. Their document, the document that came out, the NASA document, the uh, wep- uh, future weapons of war, the war after next, that one. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, that runs it down on what's going to happen on 16, and it's dead on with the stock markets. And what it said on 16, 2017 is when we have global, and by 2025, everything is in chaos, and they end that with bots and borgs, and they say that by 2050, there will be no such thing as a human being. It will be the trans, trans-human uh, project and the Avatar program. And that's the way it's playing. Well, it's moving along pretty fast. I, I can see it. I can see it happening. And things are, well, are changing NASA so fast. I've been accurate on predicting that stuff. The last mm-hmm. one they did 20 years ago, I remember... The, uh, what was that called? Secret Weapons for Silent Wars. You can look it up there. Silent Weapons for Secret Wars. Yeah, okay. That was in a very interesting book called uh, Secret the, and Suppressed by yeah. Feral Press. It was also reprinted uh, in uh, Cooper's book. Like uh, Behold a Pale Horse, he, re- he, he reprinted it. Silent Weapons for Secret Wars. Yeah. Yeah. That was their one 25 years ago. This is the new one that they're coming out with production. And what's it called? It's called Secret Weapons for... Oh, uh, that, that's called the uh, the weapons... The, weapons the new that one. Next, uh, the, let's say the war... Uh, the secret weapons of war, the war after next. And I'll send you a doc... I'll send you that. It's a NASA document. NASA release. Okay. Yeah, it, I thought you had that. I'll get it. I thought everybody had that. I've been quoting it for... I, I may have it. I don't know what yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, yeah. Let, well, go ahead and... Planet Nine, Planet Nine. Uh, it, they're calling it uh, again ten times the mass of Earth. This this thing, as as uh, Rick said, has a they're saying bizarre, highly elongated orbit. And my question is, with so many astronomers on this planet, amateur and professional, how? has that eluded detections when they're able to find things that you can't see with a naked eye. How well, can it be yeah, that it's not... So re- it's, it's wait, I mean, that part is covered, that explanation, it's valid, is covered in that first link I gave to you from, uh, what's his face? Uh, let me bring him back up. I, by the way, I'm sending you that, that document right now. It's four megabytes, so sorry about that. But it's, uh, it's a read, and let me say this about that. Uh, it's creepy. Wasn't that Nixon that said that? What's that? Did, didn't Dick Nixon say, let me say this about that? Was yeah. that Dick Nixon? As a matter of fact, he got it from me. <laughs> I worked for uh, Dr. Carl Schleicher during his period, and for uh-huh. two years I had to go into the Oval Office and report once a week. That's what I did when I worked at the Pentagon, and I got to know him. He was very bright. Who? But Nixon. Yeah, I heard he was bright. So yeah, you're talking about really Dick. Bright. Okay. Got everything I had to say. Yeah. I went in each week and say, this is what we know, this is what we don't know, and this is what I'm worried about. And mostly it was about Czechoslovakian psychic 
uh, discoveries and, and all the shit that they were doing over there in Russia. Uh, oh, in the uh, 1960s, they were way ahead. Oh, no, no, yeah. Dr. Milan Rachel, I was the guy that debriefed him when he defected. He had a bunch of thugs. I think they were Albanians. They were constantly mm-hmm. following him around. He got mm-hmm. creeped out. He died this last year. My ESP book was dedicated to him because when I debriefed him in my home in Seattle, I have that actual recording of debrief on Dr. Milan Rizal. 